there. Welcome to WesleyGospel.com. I want to talk about friendship evangelism and what an utter false doctrine this teaching is and um, how we ended up with it, why is it in the churches, and what, what we can do to reverse this trend, this horrible, awful, unbiblical teaching, which is just assumed to be true. It's just everywhere, and people are... <sighs> It's just a terrible teaching. So, um, stuff. The, the number one person that I'd say that really wrote against this, well, that I know of, is Tony Miano. He used to work with uh, Ray Comfort, a minister with Ray Comfort through Living Waters, and he has a um, he has a, a number of articles written against friendship evangelism on crossencountersmen.com. Um, I've always been persuaded that. Friendship evangelism is completely contradicted by James chapter 4, um, especially James 4.4. 4. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Um, John R. Rice had a pamphlet called The Unequal Yoke, which really goes deep into that. And John Wesley had a sermon con called uh, On Friendship with the World, um, which is, again, against this concept of friendship evangelism. So godly preachers from the past have been preaching against this stuff for, for ages. Um, this idea that, you know, if you're in the world, the, you know, you have co-workers, that it is incumbent upon you to share the gospel with them. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. That is not. Uh, God's design for the Great Commission. There is no, no scripture that ever, ever teaches that. Um, it is, it is incumbent upon pastors and evangelists to, to share the gospel with people, for the simple reason that it is practically impossible for a common everyday churchgoer to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with a coworker. I'm not, I mean, unless you want to lose your job, right? The gospel of Jesus Christ cannot be whittled down to a couple of comments and one-liners, right? It's, a, it's an elaborate system of teaching and revelation. The whole book of Romans is the gospel. The whole entire doctrine of eternal punishment, justification, sanctification, and eternal blessedness in heaven, regeneration and the witness of the Spirit has to be explained, or you just have not shared the gospel. And only an evangelist or a pastor can really do that. You have to have an evangelistic service. You have to have an evangelistic sermon to really lay out the gospel of Jesus Christ. But what came in through the seeker-sensitive movement, through Rick Warren and other people, was this idea that an everyday churchgoer, that when he goes back to work at his cubicle or whatever at work, that it is incumbent upon that guy to fulfill the Great Commission. It's not That is not taught in the Word of God. That is not taught in the Word of God. The best that guy can do is invite a guy to church. That's all he can do. There's no way you can lay out the book of Romans to a person unless you really have a really rare experience. So, I mean, on Friendship with the World, the sermon on Friendship with the World by John Wesley, he opens it with James 4.4. 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of this world is enmity with God, Whosoever, therefore, desireth to be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Folks, a guy that's working in a cubicle or in a factory or something, and he has coworkers around him that are lost, okay? The number one concern that that guy should have is not to save those guys from hell. The number one concern is to not become friends with them but to keep and maintain a state of sanctification. That is the number one concern. Now, there's a parallel passage uh, on this teaching, and that's in 2 Corinthians 6, to come out from among them and be ye separate. To not be conformed to this world, Romans 12, 2, should be the primary concern of the Christian worker who's out in the marketplace surrounded by F-word using and sex joke using co-workers. 
not to become friends with them, to get to the point of all of your love being shown that they, they may, might just want to come to church someday. That's not biblical evangelism, guys. It's not. I just need you to know that there's absolutely no biblical foundation for that. And listen to your conscience. This is making you worldly. Nine times out of ten, it's making you worldly. The gospel of Jesus Christ is preaching justification by faith alone, followed up by biblical obedience as you're regenerated by the Holy Spirit through charismatic worship. That's the gospel, man. Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross. He was punished for our sins so that we could pray to God for, for our forgiveness of sin and have peace with God. Unless you can say that to a co-worker, can say all of that to, to, to warn them against specifically idolatry, taking God's name in vain, stealing, committing adultery with their heart, then you just better just not try to share the gospel with them. If, if you can't go through all of that kind of stuff, just, just pray for them. Because you need to provide for your family. You need to make money. And if you, if you try to implement some sort of a workplace evangelism idea, you're either going to A, you're going to either A, completely modify the gospel to where the gospel's not the gospel. You're not even talking Romans anymore. Or B, you're compromising what it means to be a Christian by being friends with worldly people who continuously break the commandments and in in Ten Commandments in their behavior. So either friendship evangelism, as Tony Miano used to say, is neither friendship nor evangelism. Because Amos 3.3, 3, how can two walk together except they be agreed? If you're trying to live by the Bible and these guys around you are not trying to live by the Bible, you might call that a friendship, but it's not a friendship because you're not one in spirit. It's like oil and water. They don't mix. Number two, it's not evangelism. Because friendship evangelism is just showing love. That's not that's not that's not preaching the gospel. That's not preaching justification and sanctification to be saved from eternal punishment in the fire of hell. That's what the gospel is. The blood of Jesus Christ imputes his perfect righteousness to our sinfulness so that we can be forgiven, that the wrath of God is turned away on the cross. Man, if you're not communicating that stuff, holiness or hell, dude, you have yet to preach the gospel to that guy. Friendship evangelism is a lie. It's a false doctrine. It came in through the Jesus movement. There was some book that some guy wrote, and everybody just swallowed it up. It's a false teaching. There's so many false teachings out there. It's a false teaching, man. It's not part of the traditional evangelical canon of doctrine. Uh, let me find it, see if I can find this book. Yeah. Here we go. Our, 1984. Here, here's the book. It's called Friendship Evangelism, The Caring Way to Share Your Faith. And that's one of the things about false doctrine. It always comes across like it's so caring. You know, like the sonship teaching, which says you don't need to keep God's commandments in your life because you're just a son of God. All these false doctrines have some sort of a, oh, isn't that just so tender? Isn't that just so loving? Universalism is the same way. God's eventually going to save everyone. There either is no hell or hell's such a temporary thing. God's eventually going to save everyone because God loves everyone. That's a false teaching. You know, there's the wicked and then there's the righteous, and the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all those that know not God, right? You know, the, there's so many false teachings and you know floating around there that have a, a, an appearance of Oh, that's that's that sounds nice. That sounds like a nice thing. Guys, there is a mean side of God. God is an enemy 
of those who are against him and his law and his gospel. He says in Psalm 7 verse 11, God is angry with the wicked every day. Let that sink in. Psalm 7 11, God is angry with the wicked every single day. Psalm 7 11. Guys, friendship evangelism is a complete contradiction to everything that I was just telling you. Complete contradiction. It says that you should, you should buddy up with people and, um, and eventually get to the point of sharing the quote-unquote gospel, which is not anything even close to what I was talking about. Unless you can follow through with uh, talking about hell, turning away from sin, the Ten Commandments, obedience to the Bible, Obedience to the Ten Commandments from your heart, being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, and putting your faith in the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ so that you can experience the forgiveness of sins, then just don't try to share the gospel at all, because that's what the gospel is. And don't call something else the gospel. Don't call love the gospel. Don't call friendship the gospel. And don't call inviting people to church the gospel. The gospel is justification by faith alone and obedience to the Bible by being filled with the Holy Spirit in order to be saved from hell and forgiven of sin. And there are books out there. Uh, there are books out there that are very large and there are books out there that are very small that will teach you how to communicate this stuff. Paul Washer had a book. It was a booklet called The Gospel of Jesus Christ. I have a book. It's free. It's an e-book. It's called The Gospel of Jesus Christ. There's, a, there's Wesley and Sanctification by, by Harold Lindstrom. That's a great book. There's The Gospel According to Jesus by, by John MacArthur. That's a, that's a great book. Guys, don't call friendship evangelism or workplace evangelism the gospel. Don't call it that. Please don't do that. Because you and I both know you're not going to talk about hell and the forgiveness of sins with that guy. Now, if you really want, if you really have a heart for lost sinners, you're going to figure out a way to really preach the gospel to every creature. It's going to be street preaching, or it's going to be evangelistic services, or you're going to travel around to churches, or you're going to even become a pastor someday. But don't tell me or you're going to podcast, but don't tell me that going at a cubicle or somewhere means that you're going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and fulfill the Great Commission. That's an absolute lie. God bless you out there. This is John with WesleyGospel.com.